Hey folks, got another viewer requested video for you in today's Wrath of Math lesson. Cream Shaft recently asked me to do a lesson introducing relations. That's what we're going to do in today's video. A relation in math is pretty similar to what we think of as a relation in everyday speech. Like, what is my relation to my mother? I am her son or the sibling relation, like I have a brother, that is a sibling relation. So a relation, it's just a way of uh, relating one object to another, describes how different things relate, does the same thing in math. For example, we could say that a person A relates to a person B, and write it like that, A, R, B. A relates to B under this relation R. And we might we might define a particular type of relation like handshaking. We could say person A relates to person B if they have shook hands. And maybe Alice has shaken Bob's hand. So we could say that Alice relates to Bob. Alice R. Bob. Alice relates to Bob under this handshaking relation. And if we wanted to, if we wanted to drop the R for convenience, we could represent this relation with an ordered pair. Alice, Bob. Alice relates to Bob under this particular relation of handshaking. This relation has a special property called the symmetric property, where any time A relates to B, B also relates to A. Because if Alice has shaken Bob's hand, Bob also must have shaken Alice's hand, or Bob must have shook Alice's hand. So Bob relates to Alice, and we could represent that with this ordered pair, Bob, Alice. Of course, not all relations have this property. For example, my relation to my mother is that I am her son, but my mother is not my son. So not every relation is symmetric. And maybe Alice is a weirdo and she spent some time shaking her own hand. We could say that Alice also relates to Alice and represent that with this ordered pair, Alice, Alice. So we have these ordered pairs that show us how some objects relate to other objects, in this case, how these people relate, and we could gather them together and put them in a collection, put them in a set. In math, of course, we represent a set with these curly brackets, and then we've got a set of, of ordered pairs showing how things relate. And that's all a relation is. It is a set of ordered pairs. So let's get cracking into the formal definition, and we'll see a more mathy example. There are several different definitions you might see for relations. In this video, I'll introduce the one that I think is best to be introduced to relations with. And, you know, all the relations have the same base, all the definitions, excuse me, of relation have the same basic intention. So if you understand this one, I think you'll have a pretty easy time understanding other similar definitions that you may come across. So let's get into it. So this is all it is. A relation R on a set A is a subset of the Cartesian product A cross A. Remember that the Cartesian product A cross A is the set of all ordered pairs X, Y, where X is an element of A and Y is an element of A. So given a relation R on a set A, that's just a subset of the Cartesian product A cross A. It's just a set of some ordered pairs. Let's see an example. Suppose that our set A is the set containing the numbers 0, 1, and 2, one of my all-time favorite sets. Then we could define the relation R to just be, of course, it's going to be some subset of the Cartesian product of A cross A. Let's say our relation R contains the ordered pairs 0, 1, 0, 2, and 1. Two, and that is our relation R. It's just a subset of the Cartesian product of A cross A. We could also use some similar notation to what we were looking at before. For example, we see that zero relates to two under this relation R. We could write that zero R two. Zero relates to two under the relation R. There's no reason we need to call it R. That's just a convenient name. We could just as well call it B and say that 0 relates to 2 under the relation B. But let's go ahead and call it R because I think that's a really nice name for a relation, really pretty name. So notice we don't need a special rule to have a relation. We can just spell the relation out explicitly by listing, you know, what elements relate to what other elements. 
but if you have a special type of relation in mind, it might be more convenient to define it using set builder notation. Since a relation is just a set, we can do that. We could define it using set builder notation. For example, imagine, imagine A was a much bigger set and we had a bunch of ordered pairs in our set R might be difficult to list them all out, but if we have a special type of relation in mind, set builder notation is the way to go. So here's just another way we could write the set R in set builder notation. We could write it like this. The set containing all ordered pairs x, y that are in the Cartesian product A cross A. And what's going to be the defining property of this relation? Well, notice 0 is less than 1, 0 is less than 2, and 1 is less than 2. So in fact, the relation we've got here is the set of all ordered pairs in the Cartesian product A cross A, where the first entry of the ordered pair X is less than the second Y. So you can check by hand to see that this is indeed our relation R. These are all the ordered pairs in the Cartesian product A cross A, where the first entry is less than the second entry. Beautiful. Quickly, before we move on to the last thing I want to cover in this lesson, I want to point out that a function is just a special type of relation. Notice in this relation, R, 0 relates to two different things. 0 relates to 1 and 0 relates to 2. So R has these two ordered pairs that have the same first entry, 0. A function is just a relation where no two ordered pairs have the same first entry. That's all a function is. So then if you plot a function on a Cartesian plane, it's going to pass what's called the vertical line test. So no vertical line will pass through the function twice because no first, no first coordinate, no x coordinate is going to have multiple y coordinates. We're not going to have, you know, like an x coordinate here that also has a couple other outputs all over the y-axis. That's not going to happen. So a function is just a type of relation where no two ordered pairs in the relation have the same first coordinate. Thus, we see our relation R is not a function, but we can talk more about functions another time. Okay, so now let's talk about three important properties that, that we're often interested in when discussing relations. One of them we talked about earlier, the symmetric property. So let's talk about these, these three properties. The first one we'll mention is the reflexive property. The reflexive property. So a relation R on a set A is said to be reflexive or to have the reflexive property if for every element in A, for every X in A, X relates to itself. So xx is an element of the relation R. Again, a relation R on a set A is said to be reflexive if every element in A relates to itself. Is our relation R in this example reflexive? No, it isn't. Not every element in A relates to itself in this relation. In fact, no element in A relates to itself in this relation since no number is less than itself. So that's the reflexive property. Now, the next one we'll mention is the symmetric property, or the property of symmetry. I'll write it like that, symmetry. A relation R is said to be symmetric, or to have the property of symmetry, if, if any time x relates to y, so if xy is an element of R, the, pro, uh, the relation is symmetric if it's also the case that y relates to x. So anytime x relates to y, if a relation is symmetric, y must also relate to x. Is this example of a relation, is it symmetric? No, it's not. For example, 0 relates to 1, but 1 does not relate to 0. 0 relates to 2, 2 doesn't relate to 0, and so on, because if one number is less than some other number, that other number can't be less than the, the first number. That wouldn't make any sense. So this relation is not symmetric either. Last property of interest is the transitive property, or the property of transitivity, the transitive property. A relation R is said to be transitive if it satisfies this. If any time x relates to y, 
and y relates to z, then it must be the case that x also relates to z. So a relation R is said to be transitive if any time x relates to y and y relates to z, so these are in the relation, then x also relates to z. So x, z is in the relation as well. So is our relation R transitive? Yes, it is. For example, see, 0 relates to 1, 1 relates to 2, thus if it's transitive, 0 should also relate to 2, and we see that it does, and those are the only two ordered pairs that satisfy the first part of the transitive property, and so the relation fully satisfies the transitive property. Anytime x relates to y and y relates to z, we see that x also relates to z. So this particular function, or excuse me, this particular relation is not reflexive, it's not symmetric, but it is transitive. If a relation has all three properties, if a relation is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, then it is called an equivalence relation. So think about if you know any examples already of an equivalence relation. We see that this relation that's primarily defined by less than is not an equivalence relation. Just tried to get a sip of water and spilled it all over myself. Oh, geez. So that's all a relation is. A relation R on a set A is a subset of the Cartesian product A cross A. It's just a way of representing how different objects relate to each other. Now, I'll leave you with a question to help test your understanding of some of these concepts. Let's say we change the set A and change the relation R. So the set A is just going to be the set containing zero and our relation R on A is going to just be the set containing the ordered pair 0, 0. Let me know in the comments if you think this relation R is reflexive, symmetric, and or transitive. Tell me which of these properties you think it fulfills and why. But that will do it for today. So I hope this video helped you understand what relations are. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. I'll leave the answer to this question in the description and be sure to subscribe to the swankiest math lessons on the internet.